Welcome, everybody, to the August 25th Spokane City Council meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, Ms. Fister, could you call the roll? Council President Kinnear. Present. Council Member Bingle. Present. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Stratton. Here. Council Member Wilkerson. Present. Council Member Zapone. Here. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. Thank you. And we don't have any proclamations or salutations today. We will have three salutations next week. <clears throat> and we can go right into open forum. Sunshine, you want to come up? I think, oh, she's out. She's out in the chase cow. So she's coming. Welcome. You have two minutes. Hi, I'm Sunshine from Spokane. And um, again, I'm gonna bring up that nothing's been done about the sex offender living in the Alberta house named Tommy Aldridge, and he's 70 years old. If he's um, too old to stay on the list, we need, we need to get his address updated at least. Um, the other thing I wanted to speak about today is what's going on with the cannon shelter. We're, are we going to make it a respite bed shelter? I realize funds are tight. Um, but also we have where uh, the lady from Blessings from the Bridge, I mean, she has that locker program. We could even put that in there or something if we're not going to use it for people. Just a suggestion um, that I uh, heard of. Um, but I just want to say thank you guys for putting a cop presence up there by Lincoln Heights um, Elementary. Huge difference in the traffic. Huge difference. Um, seeing very, very good improvement up there. I haven't been road raged in a few. So um, I just want to say thank you to you guys and have a nice night. Thank you. Who's next? Dennis. Welcome, you have two minutes. Hi, Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. Uh, previously, I've talked here about how the response of our SRHD and the Department of Health and other institutions hold much of the blame for the infringements on our lives, liberties, and rights while making these false claims, obfuscating effective palliative measures, and mandating experimental and unnecessary medical treatments, in which we're involved in a lawsuit for our needed fire personnel. And for all of this, the council was so brave to call them to the carpet. Oh, no, that's not what happened. What is it that happened? Oh, yeah, you called them out to honor them. My bad. I was mistakenly mixing up what maybe you could have done for what you should have done. I'm sure you and many behind me and or listening might be rolling your eyes at my commentary, so to help achieve a level of knowledge that you've been deprived, I'm showing you this picture, which includes a screenshot from today of the excess deaths in Washington State, which includes Spokane. As a reminder, which we all lived it, so this will be very familiar, it was basically the start of 2020 that we had COVID, start of 2021 when the jabs were available, and the start of 2022, when pretty much everyone had been jabbed and or gotten COVID, such as me, I got jabbed in 2021 in February and had COVID in the Delta wave in October. Yes, you can definitely see the rise in mortality uh, in 2020, and then very high excess mortality in 2021 when everyone was jabbed. And now we still have excess mortality at rates about the same as in 2020. So where's the SRHD now? Where's the DOH now? Where is the Chiron of death across your mainstream media channels now? No wonder there's a loss of trust in our institutions. Thank you. Thank you. Next step, uh, I'm going to do three at a time, is Lisa, Christina, and then Rick. Uh, 
Um, my name is Chris Kenny, and I own a house in Audubon Park neighborhood. And I've been in the process for three months of trying to get a ADU permit for my detached garage. And I want you to know I'm not coming here to complain, uh, but I am coming with a viable solution. I, I just don't think you guys are aware of what homeowners are going through. Um, I am a, well, first off, this is a stack of paperwork of submitted and resubmitted. There's now one piece of paper for every square foot of this 320 square foot building. I'm not going up, I'm not going out, I'm not changing the footprint. And um, so this is a remarkable readmission, resubmission. I'm in the seventh resubmission process right now. It's been going on for three months. I'm a nurse. I am a travel nurse part of the year, and I, am, I continuously rent my home and or a room. Currently have a nurse living with me now. We have a health crisis that's separate, but I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm trying to get this ADU so I have a place to live, and I can rent more rooms in my home. And this, the way I've been treated, you guys cannot believe what I've been through when I've been to City Hall. I don't have expectations of people out of the background I have a huge background in construction, and I'm grateful for that, because I cannot imagine what people who don't have been treated. They try to start by getting me to put in larger pipes for a 320 square foot building. The water guy had enough of me. He got the head engineer for the city of Spokane, who came and talked to me, who, by the way, nicest man ever, who looked at it and said, you know what, Chris, you're bringing to light. We don't have a water plan for these ADUs. You don't need to upgrade your pipes. Your pipes are fine. This is great. You've got great pressure. You're right. And I've gone, and they have prolonged and prolonged. Um, so it's been, I've had to get yard waivers for buildings that have been there since 1970. My neighbor was happy to do it because my entire neighborhood is tired of my ADU project. It's consuming us all. Like, because everyone cannot understand. They keep requiring, they're requiring stuff that's not even on. They have required, I have to, had to, I've become a civil engineer overnight because I've had to download dimensioned floor plans which are not required on this checklist. They send you to the WSU website, which is listed on here. Christina, um, would you give your name and your contact information to Terry and we'll have somebody contact you that'll solve all your problems. You shouldn't have to go through this. Your time's up, but I want you to have some satisfaction. Yeah, could She's going to waive her time to me because okay. this is one of my neighbors. Okay. This is how upset my neighborhood, okay. Audubon Park as a whole, is. So I'd love to get, but again, I'd love to get you some help so you don't have to go through this bureaucratic well, can I, nightmare. Uh, with all due respect, ma'am, um, I don't ever come to the table with a problem without having a solution. Okay? Sure. So my solution to you is that I, I'm 100% about this ADU deal. This has been going across the country. Spokane finally caught up. I'm all about it. But they don't have a good process in place. They're referring you to WSU for your frustration sheets, your energy size sheets, all the requirements. Of, they're sheets that you have to calculate for how many windows and doors, and then how much ADU, how big for the ADU size, what kind of heating and cooling unit, you'll, how many BTUs, okay? You have to go do all that calculation on your, again, I'm grateful because I have that background. Did it, the WSU worksheets aren't correct. I brought that to WSU's attention they sent City of Spokane copious documents. The City of Spokane keeps telling me the wrong codes. For example, you have to have R49. That's not even the code, it's R38. WSU had to come to my defense and write emails to the engineer who's looking at my stuff. To, to everything I've had to dispute, and, and I'm not, this isn't about being right and wrong, okay? The point I want to get to is what you need, in my opinion, after going through this process, like I haven't, been, I haven't slept in three months. Because I'm up all night, driving everyone crazy because I can't get a permit for this existing building. And I don't know if you guys know about construction, but 1917 is mill true wood. We need an ADU pre-site inspector. They come out, they take an hour of their day, that's their whole job. They look at the building, they film it, they say it's either habitable, can be brought up to code, or cannot. Instead of three months of this, and now they're trying to tell me my foundation is not deep enough. I had to dig out my whole foundation by hand. Okay. So, like, this is insane. So, I don't think you guys, and I don't, I'm not blaming anyone here. I don't think you guys understand. Right. And I just don't think we have a grasp of what this process. There's which, no streamlining here. Which is why I want to make sure we connect you with the right person that can help. Yeah. 
clearly you're not there. So I'm gonna give her my card. So okay. I just want better for people in Spokane. We need housing. We need housing for health care uh, workers. I, we all agree. We all agree. I can't stack people in my house like court would. It's illegal. We we agree. So okay. let us let us help you with this. So uh, Council Member Stratton is gonna give you some contact. Okay, thank you. Um, who's next? Rick, Rick, you're next. And then after Rick is Tanya and then John. I didn't know you had that rule where somebody could take your place. I didn't know that. Is that a she, new thing? Oh, no, she allotted her time. Okay, just wondering if, that, if I can have somebody sit there and do that for me. <clears throat> um, my issue here is about a level three sex offender working at Northtown Mall at a cell phone repair place, kiosk. And the thing is, is that it was very disturbing to me because we don't have a child protection zone anymore. So it feels, it seems like these particular individuals likely to reoffend can pretty much go wherever they want now. The malls, the public playgrounds, the parks, they can go right in front of the schools. And I know the school won't let them inside, but they can go on that sidewalk and they can do whatever they want. This is so wrong. It's wrong that this person is working at the mall with hundreds and hundreds of kids. He got caught at River Park Square doing terrible things twice. And now he's at this mall flaunting himself because he knows he's smart. Nothing you can do about it. Public pressure says to me that um, I would say that people need to call the businesses at the mall and let them know that there's a level three sex offender working at a cell phone kiosk. And they can figure that out for themselves who it is, but he plays a ukulele and wears a cowboy hat. And that's about as far as I'm gonna say about that. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. <clears throat> Next up is Tanya. And then John and then Steven. I think that um, apartment complexes now, they need to um, have um, the buildings checked on like uh, every month now, you know, to see if they're, if they're checking it, uh, on bugs or not, mm -hmm. you know, and see, see if there's anyone that have bed bugs in their apartments or not, you know, because where I, where I live at right now, you know, there's, been a bunch of bugs go going around in there, and I've been itching all the time when I go in there to watch TV or even sleep, you know. And I and I I need some help, you know, with the bugs in there too. And and they they need to have reminders on when to heat apartments over there. Too, they need reminders every month. You know when, when do he he apartments over there for bugs? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, John, then Stephen and Megra. I'm John Kirschbaum. I live on North South Riverton, right directly across the river from Mission Park. We have a huge problem with, and some people like to call it homelessness, but what we're dealing with is drug addiction. We're dealing with people that are violent. My neighbor, who will speak next, was assaulted last Monday with a rock five times to the head, damn near died. I had a guy on my property three days ago in the morning. I told him he had to leave. He got violent with me. He's been harassing up and down the street for the last three days. I called the police yesterday. He drove into my yard and through my yard and over a rockery. I called the police. They never showed, even though I had a license plate number, no show. When we talked to the cops, when Steve got assaulted, he said straight up, 
we can enforce a law about the no camping on the river because we don't have the resources or the space or the time. We have to deal with higher priorities. So in other words, you pass an ordinance, you pass a law, but it's not enforced. So what's the use of that? So us as neighbors are going to end up having to take care of situations by ourselves because we will not get police response. Our quality of life has gone down. He'll talk next. He's got 15 staples in his head. I'm sure he's not very happy about it either. You need to fund the police. You need to deal with the drug addiction problem. You call homeless problem. You want to build shelters and do all that. That's great for the people that are homeless and need the help. But you're doing nothing about the drugs on the street. People are all over. You can drive down every street in Spokane and see drug addicts doing drugs all over the place. We live right on the river. You know, Mike. I do. You know what I'm dealing with? Mike Fagan, good guy. Him and I go to lunch. He said, John, there's really nothing we can do. In that sad state of affair in a city of Spokane that we cannot enforce, even enforce your own laws, thank you. Thank you. All uh, right, we have um, Stephen, Megra, and Joel. Yes, as John said, I'm his, I'm his neighbor. I'm Stephen Reed. I live down on that uh, property. And so last Monday, John and I, we work really hard to keep the bank clean, try to keep campers out. Down, kind of down the road a little bit from us, uh, there was a camp. And after about three days, we were able to get, get the guys to move. The police helped with that. They came after three days, and we were able to get the guys to move out. And that was great news. But, of course, when they carry stuff down to the bank, they don't take it all back up the hill. They'll take down 300 pounds of stuff, and they'll take 50 pounds with them when they move. So I spent last Monday, when that's when it was 100 degrees outside, dragging all this stuff up the bank, carrying all, all the garbage up. End of the day, I'm sitting back. It's cooling down. I'm sitting on the river. I go, I'm going to have a glass of wine. So I'm having a glass of wine in my chair. And now it's getting dark. It's dark. It's dark. And, and all of a sudden, I look down. And right where I'd spent all day, six hours, actually, uh, clearing the bank, some people were moving back in. So... Of course, I'm not smart enough to go inside my house and get a flashlight. So it's dark, and I start walking down the bank to tell these guys, hey, you can't camp here. I spent all day cleaning this thing up. And on my way down the bank, I tripped on a root and fell down on all fours. The next thing I know, a guy grabbed the rock and hit me in the head four or five times. I, after about four times, I kind of lost track. So it was four or five. So then I, got, I actually got 17 staples in my head, bleeding all over. Well, him and his girlfriend, they... They kind of wander, they wander off. I go, okay, great. I'm going up. Now I'm going back up the bank. Should be safe. The guy's at the top of the bank. He starts throwing rocks at me. So that's what this is from. So when he's throwing rocks at me, I lifted my left arm to block a rock from hitting me in the face, and it fractured my bone on my arm. So we have to, I don't know what the answer is, but we just, I, I, like John said, I'm concerned that what's going to happen is we, the homeowners, the people that live down there, we're going to take matters in our own hands at some point. I won't be a victim again, right? It's just, it's just not fair to the, you know, we all work, pay taxes, do all the stuff we're supposed to do, try to keep the area clean and, and safe. And plus, there's kids down there. So earlier in the day, there was a, a grandfather with two of his kids swimming. Well, you have these guys down there, the bad actors. Well, I don't know if they really differentiate between adults and kids. You don't know. So anyway, I just, the only reason I wanted to come today was to let you guys know that uh, what was going on down there. Steven. And we're doing the best I can to make it safe. And like I said, I, I, I know the police are stretched thin with budgets, constraints, and staffing problems, but I'm hoping we can come to a solution. Thank you, we, for, thank you, know, you for coming down. Well, thank we're, you for your... We're sorry about all this happening. That's how life is. Some days you're the dog, some days you're the hydrant. <laughs> Steve, I'll be, I'll be reaching out to you tomorrow. I, I'd love to connect and find out more details. Thank you, my friends. Yeah, you thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next is Megra. Megra's going to be calling in. And uh, what is she going to do? All right. Meg, are you there? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. During July 24th city council meeting, a person who was giving testimony was interrupted by a council member. They were not interrupted because they were off topic, and everything they were saying was accurate to the ordinance at hand. City council rules state they should have had three minutes to speak their piece uninterrupted, but that did not happen. A sitting council member interrupted their testimony to mock them. That is deeply concerning and violates city council rules and should be unacceptable. 
there are already many barriers to being able to speak locally about topics that affect all of us, and mocking an active speaker is a blatantly intimidating act. There are existing procedures when someone is off topic, but none of these were used as none were relevant. Instead, the council member violated rules to express his contempt and mocked an engaged citizen. This treatment is unacceptable for anyone engaging in civil discourse, but I just want to highlight a few things about the citizen that was interrupted. This person has spent thousands of hours making Spokane a better, friendlier place. They started Burritos for the People, a volunteer event that has served 29,553 burritos for hungry citizens since May 2021. For years, they have lost sleep to their detriment to feed Spokaneites and help those the city has failed to help. It's a shame that they were treated with such disrespect and justice for all deserves an apology for the appalling behavior they received. Thank you. Thanks, Megra. Uh, next, the Joel, then Union, and then Anton. Welcome. We've got two minutes. I'm Joel James from Spokane. Where, um, uh, so like what I came here to talk about is like you guys really need to put like porta potties downtown again or something or like maybe some like maybe it's like semi permanent like metal structures or something that works as a bathroom because like I uh, made a Facebook group actually today. it's called Downtown Spokane uh, Piles of Poop uh, and it's like literally pictures of poop like all over downtown. My phone died a couple minutes ago though, otherwise I'd show you a bunch of pictures. I've been taking pictures like of all the poop all over downtown. You know it's like really gross, mm -hmm. like really really gross. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Really need porta potties or something, some kind of public restroom. You know what I mean? Because I mean, it's everywhere. Okay, we've got uh, Union on line. Okay, go ahead. You have two minutes. Ian Carter. Hi. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Ian Carter. I'm a resident of Spokane. Um, I'm also a community organizer with the Peace and Justice Action League of Spokane. Um, I'm here today to talk about the Regional Housing Authority that's up for vote very soon. Um, and I just want to urge the council members here today to delay that vote until um, December. Sorry, Union? I think that there's Union? a lot of... Union? It's on next week's agenda, so that is not a topic we can discuss tonight. Oh, okay. Well, I'll sign up next week. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Antoine. And then Sherry Barnett and then Will. Welcome. You have up to two minutes. Hi, everybody. My name is Antoine. Okay, I'd just like to say, like some of these guys said about the drug use in uh, where we feed the burritos on Sundays. I mean, you know, I mean the cops are there. I mean, why, what's holding them? I mean, they do it in the open. And, not, you know, it's, it makes me question, you know, like the trash everywhere. I mean, the city, employees, why, why aren't they doing something about that? I mean, you have to have volunteers to do the work. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we're talking about... This is not a, a, a Democrat thing. This is everybody. It's Republicans. I don't see no Republicans volunteer. I mean, you're talking about and complaining about homeless. But I don't see you out there trying to do anything, just maybe a handful, something to think about. I mean, is a Republican to spend the money? But when it comes down to picking up trash and doing to bring up the community, it's not their job. It's the Democrats, it's the people of color to pick up the trash. What kind of shit is that? That's bullshit. You know? And I agree with what this is. I don't blame them. They're Republicans and they're complaining. What are you guys doing about it? Nothing. You know? Think about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sherry, then Will, and Dave. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm Sherry Barnett, and I live in Spokane. And Lori Kinnear, pres council president, well, acting president. No, I'm and not acting. all members of. <laughs> no act here. <laughs> okay. You, know, you all know that in the beginning, I came here because I had one day off from something that I always did on Monday night, and I saw the direction Spokane was going. And I've been screaming my head off to tell you, you're going the wrong way. I mentioned before about Alexis de Tocqueville because maybe I haven't made it really clear. But Alexis de Tocqueville, France declared independence when the United States did, nearly. France had a bloodbath. And they did not have success. The United States had a flaming success. And he came to find out why. He said, it is not the riches of our country. It is not our brilliant manufacturing. It's not our cattle and industry like that. But it is in the churches. It's in because. Our Constitution is built on the Bible, on God's word. But it's not the reason that we're so successful. The reason we were so successful is because we believed it and we did it. Now in our country, it's just being treated like trash. And people are saying, oh, what does the Bible have to do with anything? It has a lot to do with everything because any human can write a constitution. Only God can reward our behavior. Thank you very Thank you. much. Uh, then Will, Dave, and Justin. Good evening. My name is Will Hewlings. live downtown. Um, I just want to speak about... Um, lime scooters, actually. I was going to speak about something totally different, but since they're talking about the river, I want to speak about uh, lime scooters because I've seen a disturbing article that there's some, uh, some fishermen, they, they go out and they pull stuff out of our river, and they've been pulling a lot of lime scooters, like 200, almost 300 lime scooters out of the river. Now, since 2018, 2019, I've been against lime scooters only because they're dangerous, and they are, not just for humans, but also for the environment. You know, he, somebody was talking about Republicans. Well, de Democrats, I thought they cared about the environment, but they don't <coughs> care. It seems like they don't care. They care about money because the city makes a lot of money off these lime scooters every year. You guys are going to renew their contract. I talked to uh, Councilman Cathcart about this, and I hope they do something about it. Maybe regulate them. I, there's been so many times I've been almost hit by people on lime scooters riding down the sidewalk going 15 miles an hour. The last time it was by a little kid, probably 10, couldn't even see over the, 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 the bars, cuts through a crosswalk as I'm going through a green light on my bicycle, and who was following him? His parents. Yeah. And, you know, if I would have said something, then they would have got an attitude with me. But look, you almost hit me. So maybe the city can put some bigger signs, maybe print them on the sidewalk or do something. Because next year, I mean, it's going to be the same problem. But something else, as a cyclist, maybe get some lime bikes instead of these scooters. I mean, maybe that'll keep people healthy and then also Safer. take care of some of these problems. But thank, thank you. you. Okay, Dave. Dave, are you there? Good. Come on down. Good evening, folks. Dave Billsland, Logan Neighborhood. I have a problem with the way this city deals with things. Namely, the shelters for air, 
We had the worst air in the world a couple of days ago. Where was their shelter? You're going to send us to the, the Trek building? They don't even have air conditioners there. And what about earlier in the week? 107 degrees? Where's the person to go? I don't have air conditioning. You know what I did yesterday and the day before? I put up a box fan with a furnace filter behind it. Because that's all I could do. Because going someplace didn't make sense, because then I'd just have to leave. Now, if it's someplace comfortable, a person could stay overnight, even if it's on a freaking mat, just to get relief from that. I have emphysema. You think I want to be out in that? How many other people out there are in my same condition? How about with a 107 degree temperature? How many did we lose? I work with Cool Spokane. We hand out water. And it just so happens the MAC movement does it right out here in front of City Hall. Trying to help you guys look good. <laughs> the point is that this stuff is necessary. You need to find some place to get away from the heat. You need to find some place to get away from the, the, the bad smoke. And you need to find some place to get away from the freezing, freezing cold. We need to work on something more than just the libraries and the trek center. Maybe open up some churches and stuff. Maybe open up some city buildings. That would be up to the mayor. Thank you. Justin and then Mark Finney. Hi, my name's Justin. I live in District 1 as I moved out of District 2 because my car got firebombed by an arsonist because I stood up to the crime and the filth and the uh, crap that goes on downtown only to have someone propose a map and it couldn't even show up to the map proposal to have it redefined to add downtown to District 1's frivolities, which is deplorable and horrid, to say the least. Um, on the topic of uh, arson, you know, it would be nice to catch the arsonist because there are several in town and we are uh, suffering the effects of such said arsonists right now with the air quality. And unfortunately, the people in that little community that had complained months ago didn't get the help they needed and you're willing to spend copious amounts of money on stupid electric cars for the police department that they don't need or want or can use, but you won't buy fire trucks, which we desperately need. I suggest we have all the decrepit old aging fire trucks shuffled off to your individual neighborhoods that you either can't uh, decide on or can't spend the money on fi new fire trucks. Have them right by your neighborhood and see how long the calls take, and then maybe you'll, you'll appropriate some funding for that. Um, furthermore, if you actually responded so, to some of my emails, I might not show up as much and call you guys out in public. You know, and there, there's some people named, uh, well, I can't name them uh, personally, Briscoe, uh, Bravo Whiska, Whiskey, um, for lack of a better phrase, doesn't want to support law enforcement, but they're willing to fund all kinds of nonsense, like rainbow sidewalks. 50000 was allocated for six rainbow sidewalks. That's $600,000. You spent 10000 on two so far that I know of. That's 40000 That's $80,000. Where did the $80,000 go? Where's the money? What do you do with the money you already steal from us? And why is it that you have city council members that continually vote in higher property taxes but won't pay their own while running for city council president? That's deplorable. How, how, do you, how do you do that? While saying, I don't feel comfortable helping the, the police. I don't feel, help, feel good, comfortable helping a, a murderer. Point of order. Yeah, point of order. You know, I, uh, I didn't mention anyone by name. Uh, point of order. These, I didn't mention anyone by name. There's uh, assertions of facts that are proven to not be true, so. Th then there should be a defamation of character lawsuit because it's in print. I get things in mail that are in print that... Are, should be uh, defamation of character lawsuits. Mr. Heller. But the legislative assistant tells me I need to shut up about certain things Mr. because Heller. I bring them up. And he's like, oh, no, 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 you can't bring that up. Mr. Heller, your what? time's up. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds like something you say. Mm -hmm. You don't listen. Maybe respond to an email occasionally. I won't show up in person. Mark Finney. You like what I have to say? Respond to an email. At least it was entertaining. 
Well, I'm sorry to bring more bad news. I want to thank you all for the hard work that you do. I understand very little, but I do understand a little bit about the complexities of the works that you do. So I want to thank you, City Council, for hearing me and the rest of our uh, Spokane residents. I'm here tonight because uh, just like an hour, hour and a half ago, I read a news report in the Spokesman Review that our mayor um, appeared on stage yesterday evening uh, with Matt Shea at a white, a white Christian nationalist event. Um, and I am just deeply, deeply disturbed by that. So I'm asking you as a city council uh, to do whatever you have in your power to ensure that uh, as a community that we don't stand for any versions of white nationalism, especially that which labels itself uh, as Christian. Uh, as a member of the clergy, I'm the pastor of Emmaus Church uh, on 13th Avenue um, here in Spokane. Um, I am, uh, I cannot find the words to tell you how upsetting it is to me that our, uh, our figurehead of our city would be seen next to somebody who has espoused violent, uh, hateful rhetoric and, um, and terrible, terrible things. Uh, in my day job, I work with, um, refugees, immigrants, other groups of people. At my previous workplace, we were the victims of, um, uh, targeting for, uh, white nationalist and, uh, hateful literature. And um, I personally know many, many people who have experienced the very worst of this kind of behavior. And so I'm asking you, whether it's through a resolution, whether it's through some kind of censure, whether it's through a public statement, uh, to do something very clear to send a signal that the kind of behavior that we just experienced from our mayor last night cannot be repeated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Okay. Oh, we didn't. Okay. Jamie, absolutely. Is she here? Oh, Jamie, come on down. We're going to do a quick poetry. Council President? Yes. I have a um, certificate, but it's upstairs. Can I? Is one of our. Mm, is anybody. None of our aides. Is she here? Do you want to go up and. It's on my desk. Oh, there we go. Kim's going to do it. Oh, okay. Welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm from the Emerson Garfield neighborhood. Um, I wrote this in uh, May 2020 during the pandemic. And so we were supposed to uh, uh, write a poem about what was going on in our neighborhood. So that's what the, this is an ode, Waking 2020. It's an ode to living during the pandemic in my neighborhood. Friday morning. A snow falls. Quiet, calm blanket over the neighborhood. 4 a.m. sleepily wakes us. Birds become children unawares of death virus, dancing invisible. Disarm us with cheer cheerful chirping. Meanwhile, like jazz musicians, our local police officers respond to daily offenses, misdemeanors, as well as felons. Taking away our possible nightmares, or creating them? We are besieged by a series of traumatic events. We are minor prisoners while we wait for life to be safe again. Beauty touches us as an eagle flying for the first time over our tall fir trees. Airplanes stop, we can breathe. Snowflakes save us, painting over gray dystopian quiet splattered walls with red spray paint graffiti on our necks dripping Black Lives Matter. Wake up. We woke up. We were asleep to our neighbor, our neighborhoods. Then, during summer, two tattooists sit on a stoop of green parlor in which they work. With audacity, they drink beer, laugh, and barbecue. Neighbors notice, and our wraparound porches, our front yards, become gathering places. We are free. We can see and hear each other, creating heart oxygen. Masks for our souls, laughter helps. Bats become drive-in theaters as we sit, waiting. Our favorite evening pastime, treats in hand, waiting till sunset to watch them fly overhead, wild and free. They do not turn into Dracula at sunset. Our ears hear children playing in the front yard, sounds like grandparents telling stories of days gone by, becoming church bells in the still stagnant air. 
opening up our imagination, remembering being children ourselves when we rode our bikes, sidewalk, freeways. Life is slow. Our cats remind us of that. Dogs need to be walked, many a variety, tramps past our window, best in show. The corner dog groomer goes under and another takes their place, with even more fancy mopped cut puppies, puppies getting manicures. Ice cream, unlike snow cones and 31 flavors, a local watering hole, proves no virus will keep us. We soon realize this suite is a welcome distraction, watching families walk by with drips on their chins. Even dogs get a cone. Distractions created by great spirit, Buddha, or God. Grace topped with humor as we notice no rain, no fire, or virus will keep living people away from here. Some leave without ever being able to say goodbye. It helps keep the threads of our neighborhood together, joyful as family, friends, possibly even those secret lovers. My husband waking quietly puts his finger on the nape of my neck <laughs> as I breathe it. Garbage trucks. Rumble down the alley, waking me a sigh of relief. Though it has snowed, a bee sleeps, awaiting to awaken a flower. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. Can you hold on just one second? Oh, you have to have your picture taken, too. Oh, okay. Yes. Pictures. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to fake this a little bit. You're Thank you. Okay. We're going to move on to our consent agenda. Uh, Ms. Fister, do you want to go ahead and read it? Okay. Reports, contracts, and claims. Number one, five-year master value blanket with Two Rivers Terminal LLC, Pasco, Washington, for the purchase of sodium bisulfite for the Riverside Park Water Reclamation Facility from August 15, 2023 through August 14, 2028, $1,576,412.50. Number two, contract with Key Code Media Incorporated, Kent, Washington, for audio video system upgrades to City Council Chambers and the City Council Briefing Center from August 1, 2023 to March 31, 2024, utilizing Interlocal with Omnia Purchasing Agreement 2019 00 $225,762.37 plus tax. Deferred from July 31, 2023 agenda relates to Special Budget Ordinance C36419. Item number three, agreement amendment B with Salvation Army Spokane for operation of the Trent Resource and Assistance Center. Increasing funding from additional sources under REIT 1, Washington State Department of Commerce, row funding and ARPA, $3,500,000. Total contract amount, $9,140,586. Deferred from July 31, 2023 agenda. <clears throat> number four, special counsel contract amendment number three. With Craig Trueblood of the law firm K&L Gates LLP Spokane for outside counsel services regarding the appeal of the city's NPDES permit additional $100,000 total contract amount $350,000. Number five contract with Volunteers of America Spokane to disperse funds for development fees and construction activities for the crosswalk teen shelter and transitional housing located at 3024 East Mission Avenue from August 1, 2023 to December 31, 2023 not to exceed $1 million. Number six, consultant agreement amendment with DOWL LLC Redmond, Washington to provide for additional task supporting the citywide traffic calming program from September 1, 2023 through December 31, 2024, additional $216,026.80. Total contract amount $766,026.80. Number seven, reimbursement agreement with Spokane Transit Authority to reimburse the city for direct and indirect costs associated with preliminary engineering and design of the Division Street Bus Rapid Tran Transit Project, $100,000 revenue. Number eight, public works contract with Weatherproofing Technologies Incorporated, Beachwood, Ohio, for Martin Luther King Community Center, 2023 roof improvements from August 21, 2023 to March 1, 2024, $797,830 plus tax if applicable. Number nine, report of the mayor of Penny and eight claims of payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through July 28, 2023, 
Total $13,090,584.93 with Parks and Library claims approved by the respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library total $12,260,497.78. B, claims and payments of previously approved obligations including those of Parks and Library through August 4, 2023 total $7,924,664.69. With Parks and Library claims approved with their respective boards, warrants excluding Parks and Library total $7,560,439.06. C, claims and payments of previously approved obligations including those of Parks and Library through August 11, 2023, total $10,942,882.03 with Parks and Library claims approved with their respective boards, warrants excluding Parks and Library total $10,676,514.48. D, payroll claims of previously approved obligations through August 5, 2023, $9,511,228.71. Number 10, City Council meeting minutes for July 10, July 17, July 24, and August 3, 2023. Item number 11, therapeutic courts interagency agreements between the Washington State Administrative Office of the Courts and Spokane Municipal Court for fiscal year in 2024 for the salary and benefits program and equipment and technology training and travel and recovery services supporting the following therapeutic courts. A, community court, $293,750 revenue. B, DUI court, $76,350 revenue. C, domestic violence intervention treatment court, $341,549.68 revenue. D, veterans court, $26,400. All relate to special budget ordinance C36432. Great, thank you. And we have two people signed up to speak. Uh, Dennis, you have three minutes. Hi, Dennis Flynn. I live near St. Charles. Talking about the DOWL item on there, um, but could be talking about several other things, and I brought up the same thing on other things on the consent agenda before as well as other things, uh, we have to do better than just filling in the blanks with, you know, words. Yes, this is slightly better than the N slash A that we see in other agenda items, but the answer to how will data be collected regarding the effectiveness to ensure it is the right solution has to be better than, this is part of an ongoing program where built projects have proven effective and popular with the citizens. That is not data collection to determine if you're doing anything effective. This is not an answer to the question. This is simply typing words in a box. Um, additionally, do we employ professional planners ourselves who are paid well and have continuous training? Why are we paying DOW well for this traffic calming studies when our planners maybe could do this work? I mean, we've spent three quarters of a million of our tax dollars so far. Thank you. Thank you. And next is Megra, and you are calling in. Want to go ahead? Um, OPR 2023-0826 is a five-year contract to purchase sodium bisulfite for the Spokane River. Sodium bisulfite, as is listed, neutralizes the sodium hypochlorite. What you may not know, if you're not a chemist, is sodium hypochlorite is bleach. This bleach um, comes from the water reclamation facility. This bleach was approved July 9th, 2018 by the city council. Uh, there was a three year contract that was renewed in 2022, I believe on July 18th, 2022, to bring the sodium hypochlorite or bleach for the Riverside Park water reclamation facility. This bleach was then released along with the treated water into the Spokane River. So we've had five years of this bleach being brought into the river and it has been devastating for the aquatic life. So OPR 0826 is for a five-year contract for sodium bisulfite to counteract this bleach. Um, on page 18 of the council agenda, it states that there will not be any data collected regarding the effectiveness of this program because it is critical for wastewater treatment and it is critical. We need to counteract this bleach that has destroyed a lot of Spokane's aquatic life. But in the 2018 July 9th city council, 
it was also dismissed. The previous contract for Bleach also did not collect data. It also said it did not need to collect data. It dismisses unnecessary compared to the necessity of treating wastewater, and it has taken five years to start to counteract the devastating effects of this. This data is important, and while we need to counteract this bleach, we also need to make sure that we're not having unintended consequences, and not collecting data should not just be dismissed as unnecessary again so that we don't continually play catch up. Um, OPR 2022-0644 would spend another $100,000 on legal services appealing the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permits, or NPDES. This is a long name for describing the permits that dictate acceptable and unacceptable levels of pollutants in our water. The city is suing Washington State Department of Ecology with the trial set for 2024 over these permits. These NPDES permits are supposed to be issued every five years, but these 2022 permits were the first issued since 2011 Megra. because of an extension that was granted in 2016. Megra, Megra, your Spoken counties. Megra, your time's up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Council members, discussion? Can we do three separately? Three separately? Yes, we can. All right. So anything else that you want separate? So could I have a motion to um, accept the consent agenda except for three? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And now number three. Uh, I guess I'd still move to defer it for one week. Okay. So is there a second for that? I'll second that. Uh, discussion? Yeah, so after receiving the email from Jen Cities, I still have remaining questions. Jen stated that $750,000 was the average of the last month dating back to last November, but in fact only one month was over that amount of 808000 The rest were seven hundred. dollars and below, 716 and below. So that does not seem accurate to an average. Um, we also didn't receive the information that she said would be sent from Michelle Murray about the ARPA terms and conditions. Um, the email did state that they have a balance in there of 761,000, which would cover the August costs for now. So for that reason, I think there's a lot of questions and information that's not clear on this contract that I'd support um, deferring it from one more week to see if we can get more answers on. So there's enough, did you say there's enough to cover yes. August? The email says to cover August costs. So if we waited a week. Yeah, yeah with that clarity, I'm happy to wait the week. Okay. Okay. Okay, so are you seconding his motion? Uh, Betsy already. I already, already. seconded. Oh, you already seconded. Okay. Uh, any, but anybody else want to just talk about this if we're done? We good with this? I okay. If we get some more information, yeah. Yes. So all in favor of deferring for one week? That would be August 28th. Say aye. 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 And there are no nays. Um, Councilmember Bingle, how do you vote? Okay. So we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's move on, Ms. Fister, to legislative agenda. Ordinance C-36-418, amending ordinance number C-36-345, passed by the City Council December 12, 2022, and entitled, an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the City of Spokane for 2023, making appropriations to the various funds of the City of Spokane government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2023, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage and declared an emergency and appropriating funds in. Ordinance C-36-418, General Capital Improvements Fund, number one, increased revenue by $1,400,000. A of the increased revenue, $1,400,000, is provided by Washington State per Senate Bill 5200 for expansion of the Spokane Police Department Academy. Number two, increased appropriation by $1,400,000. A of the increased appropriation, $1,400,000, is provided solely for construction of fix fixed assets. This action arises from the need to accept the Washington State budget allocation for Spokane Academy expansion, deferred from July 31, 2023 agenda. Thank you. We have two people signed up, Dennis and Megra. You have three minutes. 
Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. Tendencies today are to blame groups and everyone in that group as the perpetrators of evil. It used to be that everyone knew that there were bad individuals in every profession, whether lawyers, doctors, city council members, county commissioners, legislatures in Olympia, carpenters, plumbers, checkout clerks, or police. All too often we hear something akin to ACAB or all cops are bad, as if to say that the police in general and therefore each individual police officer is a systemically racist authoritarian when the reality is sometimes a good person who is good at his job will make a mistake that has a serious result. And of course there are still the individuals that are plain bad and shouldn't be on the job. But to lump every member of a group as necessarily a representative of everything anyone in that group does wrong whether that lumping is melanin content of uh, skin color to political party or other, uh, well, that by itself is bigotry. A person isn't bad because he wears a badge. I support the expansion of the police academy in Spokane. Whether or not I support this project, I still stand on my principled stance that if we want something locally, we should decide locally to pay for it with local tax dollars. So my principled position against state or federal monies paying for any of this still stands. Thank, Thank you. you. Megra. Um, this ordinance is accepting the funds for police academy expansion that the state approved during their legislative session. Yes. Per capita, Spokane Police Department is the third deadliest police force in the entire nation. This can be corrected with de-escalation training, and this de-escalation training can and should be done at this revamped police academy. We should be focusing on how to avoid confrontation, avoid the use of guns, avoid the use of chokeholds, which have been linked to long-term health issues, including death. We should be focusing on these non-violent solutions, and they can be done at police academy training. Thank you. Thank you. Council comments? I will say Council Member Swan and myself toured the training academy when they had asked for a lesser amount of monies. And we went out there and saw the need and we ended up in Olympia lobbying for additional funds, which we were glad that they provided. They need the amenities to train and to do their work. So I am in support of this. I understand that there might be additional funds needed to complete the work just due to inflation costs. And I would support that also. We just have to give the people the right tools they need to get the job done. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll just add on that it was um, really proud to work with this with Councilmember Wilkerson and Councilmember Bingle on the Legislative Committee too and advocating for this funding from the state legislature. Um, this is a great investment in our local police officers and our facilities that are inadequate. We, we saw that desperately, the, the carpet and all the, the facilities there were inadequate. Um, I know that this was not coming as quickly as the, the police wanted it. They wanted some renovations about a year ago, but I'm hoping that this will be much more than they had requested even at that time. Uh, I think that's really important to show our commitment and dedication to our police officers and um, our advocacy for that. I think it's also important to note that the legislature at this time, or at the time last session, was already looking at investments in police training academies across the state, but was not looking at Spokane. And so because of our advocacy, we were able to get that investment here in Spokane that would not have happened otherwise. So I was glad to work with you and go to Olympia to advocate for that. Anyone else? Well said. Okay. All right, prepare to vote. Oh, Council Member Stratton, what broke, have you done? Mine's broken. Let's try this Don't again. Wrong. Prepare to vote. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. All right. Aye. Good. Thank you, Council Member Bingle. That passes 7 0. Right. Six, next. 6 0. Oh, sorry. I'm counting myself twice. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Miss Sister. Ordinance C-36419, American Rescue Plan Fund, number one, increase appropriation by $350,000 funded from the city's direct allocation of the state and local fiscal recovery fund of the American Rescue Plan Act. 
A of the increased appropriation $250,000 is provided for the purpose of providing funding to update the audiovisual technologies of the Spokane City Council briefing chambers and council chambers to enhance accessibility to the public. B of the increased appropriation $50,000 is provided for capital expenditures for the transportation of the city owned firehouse. This action arises from the need to provide appropriation authority for funding critical service and accessibilities to the community deferred from July 31, 2023 agenda. Thank you. We have two people signed up, Dennis Flynn and Megra. Hi, Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. I'd like to point out that too many people think there's an unlimited printing press that equates to limitless fields of money trees and that there are none, zero, nada, negative consequences to printing all this money. ARPA, Infrastructure, CARES, Inflation Reduction, or should I say Production Act, is ignorant to think that all these disgusting decisions by politicians to spend my money on someone else, which is the least efficient utility of allocating money, is going to not result, result in willful misallocations of capital, zombie companies that should fail, failing companies that would succeed if the deck wasn't stacked against them, and obviously to anyone who has done any grocery shopping or filled their gas tank, massive inflation of all the things we need just for daily life, let alone saving for any big purposes, purchases. Case in point is the 250,000 of ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act, funding to buy audiovisual equipment for this room and 50,000 to move our tiny house for fire and smoke education. Do I think we should spend money on these things? Probably, but I'd have to hear the why to spend our money on these things instead of other things. Do I think we should pay for these things ourselves with local tax dollars? H-E-L-L, yes. Do I think we as a county should, country should, I'm sorry, do I think we as a country should allocate 300,000 of federal tax dollars to Spokane buying AV equipment and moving a tiny house? Well, if it sounds ridiculous, then it probably is. I know it's only a tiny drop in the bucket, but what we keep hearing for about leaky faucets and toilets is that all those little drops make up a huge total. So pull your heads out, people. Tell Kathy McMorse Rogers, Patty Murray, and Marie Cantwell that's ridiculous that federal funds are being spent like this. Thank you. Thank you. Megra? Um, this uses money, like we just heard, for updating the audio and visual tech to enhance accessibility of city council to the public. This increased accessibility is very important and it's vital for engaging for increasing citizen engagement and increasing citizen knowledge about what is going on in the city in the county in the world that affects them page 384 of the agenda in the summary says quote the city's informational technology and city channel 5 teams worked with the provided to determine the appropriate needs this is a great, <laughs> this is great to increase the availability of these videos for people who cannot attend these council meetings in person, for people who cannot listen at, five, at 6 p.m. on a Monday, for the people who need to be able to watch this later, having these videos more widely available, having these videos up on the Spokane City website, having these videos on Facebook, all of this is important in increasing civic engagement and citizen knowledge. This is good. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you. Council comment. Well, as evidenced by tonight and other nights, our technology is woefully inadequate for what we're trying to accomplish and the technology has improved significantly so I'll be supporting this. It is a way that we connect with our constituents and how we communicate with them and to make it the most efficient, effective way to get the word out about what goes on at your city hall and how we communicate with each other. Thank you, anybody else? Go ahead. Yeah, I would also just say we've already funded the uh, new and improved fire safety house. This is just funding the vehicle to tow it and um, the fire department went around and got private donations that paid for uh, about half of the vehicle too. So this is matching it. And I think it's, as we know, it's critically important to be supporting that fire safety. Even though I have my own trauma from that fire safety house when I was like in second grade and 
being inside a house on fire, uh, those memories live with you and you learn how to be safe. So I think that's important and, and glad to be supporting it. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else? All right, prepare to vote. Councilmember Bingle, Aye. thank you. All right, that was a 6 0 vote. Thanks, everyone. Next. Ordinance C36423, Housing Sales Tax Fund, number one, increased appropriation by $300,000. A of the increased appropriation, $300,000, is provided solely for contractual services to be provided by the city's selected recipients to increase affordable housing inventory and or preserve current affordable housing inventory. This action arises from the need to increase affordable housing inventory for low to moderate income households in the city of Spokane. Thank you. We have one person signed up, uh, Dennis Flynn. Hi, Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. It's almost funny, if it wasn't my tax dollars that were funding it, that the city, county, and state elected officials think that all that's needed is more cowbell. That if we just give more taxes and give up more of our rights, that somehow the government, which obviously is made of individuals who are enlightened above the rest of us and will perfectly make perfect decisions to achieve perfected outcomes, Maybe instead you could identify problems, engage the citizens and businesses to come up with solutions and then ease the way for the private sector to provide those solutions. Along the lines of you don't want people doing drugs in your doorways, leaving a wake of refuse and vandalism and theft. Well, the law says we can't detain them if there aren't shelter beds. So what are you, the community, going to do to either make more shelter beds or incentivize a decrease in the population causing the problem? And how can we, your government, get out of the way or at least ease your path? That our city government has a five-year plan to end homelessness shows you still think government is the answer. How low do things have to go before you come to the obvious realization that government is incapable of coming up with the ultimate answer? Think about it. If your department gets council funding allocations to end homelessness, what do you see coming if you actually succeed? Oh yeah, the end of the funding, quite the incentive program. There are multiple federal, state, county, and city buckets that have poured gasoline on our affordable, affordable housing problem. So there is no one thing that is the ultimate problem. But what I can tell you is that anyone with eyes to see just needs to look at an affordable housing graph over time for Washington State. And you'll see the Growth Management Act, our state legislature is forced on us as a huge contributor. And it will be impossible to fix as long as there are government interferences in the supply demand curve because basic economics tells us Restricted supply will obviously mean an increased price. Thank you. Thank you. Council commentary. No, all right. Prepare to vote. Councilmember Bingle. Aye. Thank you. Another 6 0 vote. Great. Moving on. Are you adding those up for your uh, tenure as council president? Yes, I am. Thanks for <laughs> noticing. This one I will read in its entirety. Ordinance number C36432, an ordinance amending ordinance number C36345 passed by the City Council December 12, 2022 and entitled, an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the City of Spokane for 2023, making appropriations in the various funds of the City of Spokane government for the fiscal year in December, ending December 31, 2023, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage and declared an emergency. Whereas subsequent to the adoption of the 2023 budget ordinance number C36345 as above entitled, in which passed the City Council December 12, 2022, it is necessary to make changes in the appropriations of the miscellaneous grants fund, which changes could not have been anticipated or known at the time of making such budget ordinance. And whereas this ordinance has been on file in the City Clerk's Office for five days now, therefore the City of Spokane does ordain Section 1 that in the budget of the miscellaneous grants fund and the budget in X there too with reference to the fund, the following changes be made. Number one, increased revenue by $738,050. A of the increased revenue, $293,750 is provided by the Administrative Office of the Courts for the Community Court. B of the increased revenue, $76,350 is provided by the Administrative Office of the Courts for the DUI Court. C of the increased revenue, $341,550 is provided by the Administrative Office of the Courts for the DVIT Court. D of the increased revenue, $26,400 is provided by the Administrative Office of the Courts for the Veterans Court. Number two, increased appropriations by $738,050. A of the increased appropriation, $366,930 is provided solely for the base wages and benefits. B of the increased appropriation, $9,250 is provided solely for mining or equipment. 
C, of the increased appropriation, $53,600 is provided solely for travel. D, of the increased appropriation, $300,270 is provided solely for, for professional services. Section 2, it is therefore by the City Council declared that an urgency and emergency exists for making the changes set forth herein. Such urgency and emergency arising from the need to accept the Administrative Office of the Court's therapeutic court grants and because of such need and urgency and emergency exists for the passage of this ordinance and also because the same makes an appropriation, it shall take effect and be enforced immediately upon its passage. All right, thank you. We have one person signed up. That is Megra. You want to go ahead? This money from miscellaneous grant fund is being distributed to vitally necessary therapeutic courts. Therapeutic courts are better than jail. They reduce recidivism, they treat addiction, and they help citizens get the help they need. At least they're life-changing for those who have access to these courts. Dr. Sandra Altschuler, a clinical social worker specialist in Spokane, wrote to the spokesman in 2020 that when Larry assumed office, referrals to therapeutic courts dropped significantly and more insidiously, virtually no people of color were referred. When inquiries were made about this, his office refused to send the needed information about their referrals while claiming we don't turn anyone down. Many attorneys in Larry's office countered that claim by noting that they and their colleagues would receive reprimands for submitting referrals to our courts. These courts and this money from this miscellaneous grant fund for these courts is necessary. It's great. It's vital. It helps Spokane and it helps people. But these courts are still not available to everyone in Spokane. We need them to be. We need the data that proves that everyone has access to these courts and the life-changing work that they do. Thank you. Thank you. Council comments? Really? Okay. Good. Prepare to vote. Look at that. Councilmember Bingle? Aye. Thank you. Six zero. All right. Next up, Ms. Fister. <clears throat> Emergency Ordinance C-36417 relating to regulations of residential rental housing adopting a new section 10.57.115 to chapter 10.57 SMC and repealing SMC 18.08.010.0.020.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.040.
who are being served with evictions and are going to court and are defending their evictions. And the reason, I, I don't know if I'm really testifying against what, what you're doing tonight, um, because the, the ordinances that you're repealing are no longer in effect because the ERPP ended, with the exception of three ordinances, and that's why I'm a little concerned. Uh, Spokane, uh, Spokane Municipal Code 1808-010 creates rental assistance. Rental assistance is still an ongoing program. The state will continue to fund. And so that, I mean, I don't know that whether you need to repeal it at the local level, but that is, a, that will continue to happen. I'm worried that, that this is going to um, give out some misinformation and that tenants will feel they don't have protections. They do. And um, the other one is 1808-100. Now, that's not a law, but Spokane Police Department do not um, enforce evictions. That is the function of Spokane County Sheriff. And so I don't even know why that, that ordinance even exists because it just doesn't happen. But the one I'm most concerned about is 1808-130, right to counsel. That's a state law that was passed before COVID. Um, City Council cannot repeal that law because it's a state law. It was passed by our state legislature, I think, in the 2018-2019 session. Um, and tenants do have a right to counsel. And more than anything, I'm here, so if any renters are listening or hear about this, I want them to know they still have the right to counsel, even if you repeal this ordinance, because this is a state law. Tenants should go to court when they're served the summons so they can get their counsel appointed and that they can be defended in their evictions. I don't want your action tonight to mislead Spokane renters into thinking that they T that this will end Terry. their protection. Terry, Terry. They don't end. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Council commentary. Great. Prepare to vote. Councilmember Bingle. Councilmember Bingle. Aye. Thank you. All right, six zero. It passed, and on to the next one. Okay. Ordinance C thirty six four thirty three. Now we'll read this one in its entirety. An ordinance amending the specific type of police vehicles allowed to be procured and commissioned as cited in Ordinance Number C thirty six two zero one that was passed by the Council on May second, twenty twenty two and declared an emergency, whereas on May 2nd, 2022, the council passed ordinance number C36201, which specified the specific type of police vehicles allowed to be procured and commissioned with American Rescue Plan Act funds, and which ordinance in turn amended ordinance number C36121, which is passed by the council on December 13, 2021, and was titled, an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the city of Spokane for 2022, making appropriations to the various funds of the city of Spokane government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2022, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage. And whereas on February 6, 2023, the council passed ordinance number C36353, which carried over budget authority for 2022 obligated budget items that were not completed by year end, which included funding for the specific type of police vehicles included in ordinance number C36201. And whereas subsequent to the adoption of the ordinance number C36201 and ordinance number C36353, Due to manufacturing constraints, many of the specific type of police vehicle orders allowed to be procured and commissioned as cited in ordinance number C36201 may not be fulfilled. And whereas this ordinance has been on file in the city clerk's office for five days, now therefore the city of Spokane does ordain section one, that section 1.AI of the ordinance number C36201 providing for changes in the budget of the American Rescue Plan Act Fund and the budget annexed thereto with reference to the American Rescue Plan Act Fund be amended as follows. Up to 25 Ford K8 Police Interceptor Ford F-150 Police Responder or similar models as vehicle availability allows. Section 2, it is therefore by the City Council declared that an urgency and emergency exists for making the changes set forth herein. Such urgency and emergency arising from the need to purchase and commission fire and police vehicles, purchase and installation of electric charging infrastructure, and procurement of a study and because of such need and urgency and emergency. An urgency and emergency exists for this passage of this ordinance and also because the same makes an appropriation. It shall take effect and be enforced immediately upon its passage. Uh, Terry, can you also read, because they are related, um, 0073? <clears throat> 
Resolution number 2023-73, a resolution amending the specific type of police vehicles allowed to be procured and commissioned as cited in resolution 2022-30. Whereas Spokane City Council passed resolution 2022-30 on March 28, 2022, which pre-authorized Spokane Police Department to enter into purchase agreements for police vehicles. And whereas subsequent to the adoption of the resolution 2022-30 due to manufacturing constraints, many of the specific type of police vehicle orders allowed to be procured and commission as cited in resolution 2022-30 may not be fulfilled. And whereas this amendment will allow more flexibility in quickly providing vehicles to the Spokane Police Department for which there is a critical need. Now therefore be it resolved that the Spokane City Council shall properly amend the specific type of police vehicles allowed to be procured and commission as cited in special budget ordinance C36201 that was passed by the council on May 2nd, 2022 to read as follows. Up to 25 4 k police interceptor Ford F-150 police responder or similar models as vehicle availability allows. Be it also resolved that fleet is pre-authorized to enter into purchase agreements for vendors of 35 police vehicles in order to avoid price increases and product scarcity. Thank you. We have four people signed up. Uh, Megra, you're on first. Uh, this ordinance would change the wording from, quote, electric hybrid models to, quote, police interceptor, Ford F-150 police responder, or similar models. This change completely negates the original intent to invest in electric models. Um, April 6, 2022, a KXLY news article quote, then city council president and co-sponsor co -sponsor of the original legislator, Brianne Begg, as saying, quote, the good thing about it is it is cheaper in the long run for us. These electric vehicles are reported to last twice as long. Anytime you buy an electric vehicle, it's like you're buying two vehicles for one. Changing the wording from electric hybrid model to Ford F-150 or similar, which on average gets about 20 miles per gallon, changes the purpose of the initial investment of the $6,271,869 from a longer lasting, more environmentally friendly vehicle into a shorter lived gas guzzler. This is not a simple change in vehicle models, but actually undermines the purpose of the initially passed ordinance C36201. Thank you. Thank you. And Terry Hill. Good evening, council president, council members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak here tonight. My name is Terry Hill, longtime Spokane resident. Um, there's a lot more detail read by Ms. Fister earlier. I don't know how she reads all that stuff so fast. Um, so I may be a little bit off base here, but as I understand it, currently the city requires all new purchase, all new vehicle purchases to be EVs or hybrids. I do not understand why you would want to change that. Vehicles you purchase today are going to be on the road for five more years. Fossil fuel vehicles will be spewing carcinogens into our air and cooking our planet for five more years. When you consider this resolution, think about your, well, some of, most of you are too young to think about your grandkids. Think about your kids. Do you want them to experience what our neighbors 17 miles southwest of here are going through right now? Apparently there's a window of opportunity here that the city doesn't want to miss and I may not fully understand that. But the window of opportunity that concerns me is the life of our planet. It's closing, and it's closing a lot faster than anybody has predicted for a lot of years. We keep, and I'm, I'm going to cite precedence here because I heard this word spoken earlier. If we continue with this fossil fuel bullshit, we're going to cook this planet to our own detriment. Thank you. Thank you. Sherry Barnett. The 
Yes, I'm Sherry Barnett, and I live in Spokane. And I am no great scientist, but I have studied this some. And actually, the amount of CO2 is a very small amount from vehicles. And the fact is, you can have two days with absolutely no electrical power. What are you going to do then for law enforcement? You need to let them have some degree of ability to take care of the eventuality of not having electric power. And that, it happened in San Diego for two days. So had we had electric cars, the people could have really gotten away with all kinds of things. <laughs> and the other thing is, there are many that show that the planets are heating up, yes, but that's because the sun is heating up. And the CO2 from Earth has nothing to do with the other planets, but you can check it out. This is the truth. Thank you. Thank you. And Will Euling? Good evening. My name is Will Hewlings. I live downtown Spokane. Um, I'm actually for this. I'm glad you changed the wording. Um, just, just last week, um, downtown, I rode past the downtown precinct, and I rode past uh, a Ford Mach-E. It's a fully electric SUV. And, and I posted this on Facebook. Why, and, I, and to my understanding that I guess there's a couple higher ups that drive these. And I understand the governor and all the Democrats, once again, they're bringing up climate change. This has nothing to do with climate change. It's, ha it's about having the best equipment for our police officers. They are short police vehicles. And because of the, you know, our, our uh, Earth right now, there's a shortage of uh, stuff that they need to make these electric vehicles. So I'm glad you changed the wording so now you guys can purchase them some vehicles. I mean, I still see them driving around Ford Crown Victorias. I mean, this is 2023, and they don't need Teslas either. Do the research. We live in a cold climate. It gets down into the teens. Think about your cell phone. It's lithium ion. If it gets cold, your phone doesn't hold a charge. It, it doesn't work. So you're going to have, you want, like, if you went with all electric vehicles to save the planet, how's that going to work? You know they take, a, like, 8 to 10 hours to fully charge unless you uh, buy these $20,000 uh, chargers? I've read all about it. I've done the research. But I hope you guys do, and I hope you do something smart. They need good equipment. Internal combustion engines work. Thank you. Thank you. Council commentary. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have to invest in the tools to keep our community safe. There's no doubt about that. And when we're borrowing cars just to maintain community safety for Bloomsday, we're borrowing cars to maintain community safety during this absolute disaster of a fire season. Um, I mean, that's not a place to be, and that frankly puts a lot of people at more risk than they ever should be. So I'm very happy to support this and whatever it takes to get the, the investments we need to make sure our officers have the tools and our community is safe. Go ahead. I just wanted to thank Mr. Hill. Um, thank you for your comments. I agree with everything that you said. Um, however, this is one of those moments when We've got this, we've got to find a balance here. Um, we've had several um, study sessions and reports from the police that um, as much as we'd like to have more electric vehicles, um, they're hard to get, that we have vehicles now that are costing more, they're breaking down more often, they're costing more to fix. Um, so, and then we have a community and neighborhoods that are um, very, very concerned about uh, Police, policing in their neighborhoods and having the 
equipment necessary to keep people safe. So I will support this, but it's, it's not without some really heavy thought and um, worry as we move forward. And hopefully in the you know, near future, we can correct it by getting more vehicles that are electric and less harm to the environment. But I do think this is a sample of kind of the two different sides of arguments that we hear that we have to make some decisions on. But thank you, Mr. Hill, for coming down. And thank you for, for what you said because it really resonated with me. Thanks. Yeah, I also agree that we need to be doing everything that we can to be transitioning to renewable energy and electric. And that is why the state is forcing us to move that way. Um, I think that there's been some struggles internally about trying to move that way. And um, I understand the need for vehicles. I have not been convinced of the efficiency of our fleet and how we are running our fleet. And um, hope that we can continue to moving to using our current existing fleet more efficiently and uh, prolonging the life out of those vehicles. Uh, but we really have to be moving to that more renewable energy source. Uh, just this week, we have fires here in Spokane. We have floods and hurricanes in California. We have to be doing everything we can to address the climate crisis that we're in. Um, but we have no other choice right now because we um, aren't really presented with other options. So I will be unfortunately supporting this tonight uh, without a lot of a, a lot of weight in my heart, as Councilmember Kinnear said, or Kinnear, <laughs> Councilmember Stratton says, uh, but I will be supporting this council. Were you president. confusing the two of us? You moved seats. I got confused. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, Councilmember Wilkerson, do you? Thank you, Council, council President Kinnear. You know, I support this. It came to us, and I had a conversation with an officer. They're running out of cars. When we first put this model in place to get electric vehicles, none of us could foresee the future and recognize the challenges of getting those vehicles to us and all the things that were outside of our control to place an order and receive those vehicles in a timely manner. Also, prior administrations had not kept up with cars, so it wasn't just us. This is something that is historical that we are now presented with the challenge to fix and get caught up to the capacity that the officers need. So as we continue forward, I look forward to saving the planet, um, but I also want our officers to get to the calls they need to for the public safety that people have continue to cry out loud that they want an officer to show up. And I want them to get there in a safe manner. So I will be supporting this. Thank you. And I too want to thank Mr. Hill for his testimony because it resonated with me as well. I know that uh, the original order that was electric, we can no longer get. It's just not available anymore. So we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. And as we heard testimony, testimony earlier today about people who have called police and nobody comes, and that is just unacceptable. So we need to make sure that our police department has all the tools they need because their first and foremost job is to protect the citizens and they have to be able to get there to do it. So I too will be supporting this. Um, Councilmember Bingle, do you have anything to say? I think everything's been said. I think that we, we hear every day about the, the need for the police department and making sure that they have all the equipment they need to keep our, our families because as somebody brought up, I do think about my kids. I do think about my grandkids and the future that they're going to have. And uh, currently the, the thing that scares me the most is, um, you know, a tragedy happening to a family here in the city of Spokane and, and not being able to have uh, those tasks to defend uh, the citizen being able to get there. And so I'm happy to support this and look forward to many more investments. Thank you. And just a reminder, we're taking the resolution and the ordinance together. The sister read them both, so we're going to be voting on both of these. So please, prepare to vote. Mr. Oh, Mr. Aye. Thank you. All right, 6-0. And next, Ms. Sister. Resolution 2023-70, approving settlement of claim for damages of area... 
Arielis Earthman and Tammy Earthman as a result of damage to their property, $105,795.18. Thank you. And this was a substantial leak. It wasn't even a leak. It was an onslaught of water into their home. So this is restitution uh, for those damages. Any council commentary? We have no sign-ups. All right. Prepare to vote. Councilmember, thank you. Six zero. And next, resolution twenty twenty three dash seventy one declaring the waiver of public bid requirements for the purchase of twenty twenty three to twenty twenty four insurance premiums for specified city insurance coverages. Okay. Do we have any council commentary? All right. We have nobody signed up. Prepare to vote. Aye. Thank you. Six zero. And next, resolution 23-72, setting timelines for adoption of the 2024 annual budget for the city of Spokane. Thank you. Uh, we don't have anybody signed up. So do we have council commentary? Go ahead. Yep, I will, uh, I'll just say that given the changes on council and, and when some of those additional changes are going to occur at the end of November, this is sort of a necessary thing, I think, to make sure that, that we have folks here able to really consider the entirety of the budget and not be coming on right as we are just voting on it. So I think moving it up is important. Uh, I also think it gives us a really good opportunity uh, as well to truly force us to focus and, and hopefully make those decisions as soon as we can. So uh, we've got some big decisions that we are gonna have to make over the next several weeks, months. So it's gonna be a big election or a big uh, budget season. So. Anyone else? I echo Councilmember Cathcart's comments. It would not be fair to bring someone on and just dump this on them. Even as a seasoned council member, well, three years, it's a heavy lift to understand the budget of the city and all the nuances that go with that. But I'm glad we'll be getting it earlier and to vote on it and then be able to move forward with 2024. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, prepare to vote. Councilmember Bingle. Aye. Thank you. Six zero. And next, Ordinance C thirty six four twenty relating to parks, amending Section twelve point zero six a point zero four zero of the Spokane Municipal Code concerning park rules and regulations, and adding a new Section twelve point zero six a point zero five five to Chapter twelve point zero six a of the Spokane Municipal Code. Um, Mr. Wright, do you want to just go over briefly what this is about? Because we've already passed this, and yes. then we made changes to the times. Parks didn't agree. So do you want to just do a little synopsis sure. for us? Um, at Parks' request, the park, uh, excuse me, the council considered increasing the penalty for being in the park after hours from a civil infraction to a misdemeanor. In the process of doing that, the council um, changed the hours in the parks from uh, 10 to 6 to 11 to 5 a.m. Um, that was um, questioned as to whether or not it was within the council's authority given the park board's authority under the charter. And so the park board actually asked the council to change the hours back in this ordinance. So all this ordinance does is um, it keeps the misdemeanor provision, but it restores the hours that used to be in the ordinance um, before the council took action. And so if you adopt this ordinance, you'll be restoring the, or the hours of 10 to 6 when parks are closed. So just to be clear, we're not voting whether to put this ordinance into place or not. We're voting on the hours, changes to the hours. I want to make Correct. sure the people testifying realize this is not about getting rid of the ordinance. That ship has sailed. We're talking about the hours, correct? Correct. All right, thank you. We have two people signed up. Uh, Dennis first. Hey, Council. Dennis Flynn, live near St. Charles. Uh, I support this ordinance. I know that um, I supported it before, and some of the same arguments against it would be made. Uh, provide more opportunities, provide more services, provide more, more, more. Um, 
And I know that a big part of understanding the original, or maybe get some conciliation on uh, the original uh, change to a misdemeanor was to increase the park hours. So there may be some angst about that, and I'm sure you're prepared for that. Um, I'd say instead of you providing more, 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 it's on the community to provide more, more, more. Your job is to engage with the community and provide us insight into the problem and ask for us for involvement to come up with solutions and then use your power to remove barriers and ease the way for those solutions. It's not up to you to provide. You are not our providers. Thank you. Negra? Um, as has been stressed several times tonight, this ordinance simply changes the hours of the park closure that were listed in the original uh, narrowly passed ordinance C36394. Correct. Uh, in this case, Exhibit A, uh, this ordinance criminalizes a person being in the park for different hours, for extended hours, uh, for simply being on park property during the hours of closure. This ordinance C36420 continues this criminalization for a different amount of hours, for a longer amount of hours, as was just stated. Uh, this misdemeanor increase from a civil infraction comes with an average of 270% increase in jail time. Government is by the people, for the people, we the people. This change in hours, this criminalization of people, when we have heat waves in Spokane, when we have no AC indoors, when we're looking for someplace to sleep at night because there are no shelters open, this ordinance is still not helping the people of Spokane. And this change in hours still does not affect those who engage in illegal activities but it instead still criminalizes one of the few free public spaces left available to we, the people. Thank you. Thank you. Council commentary. You all just tired? I yeah. just would say thank you to Council Member Bingo, Council Member Cathcart. We've talked about this a long time and correct tonight. We're just looking at changing the hours um, but there has been a lot of public discussion. I think people are aware of the increase in crime that's going on in especially my district in Northwest Spokane. Um, I did wanna just say that in our last discussion and debate on this, one of the requests or issues was possibly including a sunset clause to um, end it after a year. And I sent council members an email in July um, with our legal department with their um, legal feedback on that, um, saying that it probably wasn't a good idea because um, it is, we're talking penalties, we're talking law, and um, that you shouldn't do that with um, when you're um, arresting people or when you're um, citing people. So I did wanna call that to, um, I also asked council members if they had any information from um, other um, municipalities that might do that and that it's working for them and I did not get a response on that. So that's really the only changes we made was, was the hours. Um, but I do appreciate the conversation. It's been lively and, um, but I will say that the people that I know that are living around parks right now are um, looking for some sense of um, law and order in the parks after dark, so thank you all. Anybody else? Go ahead. I will not be supporting this tonight for the very reasons I didn't support it before, but the confusion I think they're trying to clear up is we're talking park hours. So in the beginning we did not engage parks, so we could not have had to go through this whole process or they didn't give us their feedback or their board didn't vote on it. But this goes back to the park hours, which is 10 to five, but our ordinance is 11, 10 to six, and, and ours is 11 to five. The nuance is what time can the officers actually arrest with this misdemeanor? 
So just because the park board goes back to 10 p.m., what we voted in starts at 11 to 5. So I just want that to be understood by people that it is going to cause some confusion uh, for officers or people who's not watching the clock as they go forward. Also, yes, there is an increase in crime, but it has not all been specifically in parks. And it's been during the day. I mean, it's been 24 hours. So to specifically call this out at night, I think is unfair to a lot of people who do use the park legally in the nighttime hours. And really, is it just specific parks or is it all parks? I never really got a handle on that uh, as well. So other questions that were never answered for me, and I know we're going to get data later at some point, so I look forward to that, but I will not be supporting tonight. Council President. Go ahead. Yeah, that just reminded me. One, one thing, just so folks know, uh, we do have as a, just related, since Council mm -hmm. Member Wilkerson brought it up, we do have on my public safety agenda next Monday a discussion regarding daytime safety in parks. Uh, it is becoming an increasing concern. Uh, anybody who's been anywhere near Hillendale knows exactly what I'm talking about. This is really, really bad stuff right now. So we're going to have a conversation on that because that is equally important that we need to get a handle on. Okay, anybody else? I'm going to be supporting this because I think it's really important that people going into our parks um, feel safe. And if you're going in after the hours that the park, has, park board has said the park is closed, then you really are breaking the law. You're not doing things that are um, not legal. And so um, I will be supporting this. And it's, it feels a little draconian. But at the same time, we have to do something to curb what has been happening in our parks, shootings, stabbings, and some of the folks living around our parks. Um, you heard testimony tonight from two gentlemen who were just trying to make th their mission park and the river safer, and they get attacked. So that is not OK. So prepare to vote. Oh, Mr. Bingle, do you have a House Member Bingle, do you have anything? Yeah, just one quick question. Um, I might have misunderstood this. Um, not changing the hours of the misdemeanor to 10 to 6. What did he say? What did he... I'm sorry, can yes, you say it 10 again? 10 to 6. So the, he's asking what time it, will it, the misdemeanor be enforced? 10 to 6. No. 10 to 6. Oh. Okay, that's what I thought. I just was... That's money. With okay. the exception of Riverfront Park, because that's midnight to 6 a.m., Midnight to five, yeah. To six. Let me ask Mr. Wright, could you just give us clarity on what we're voting, the time, because, and what the infraction would be? Okay. You have already increased the penalty from an infraction to a misdemeanor for being in parks after hours. Um, when you did that, you changed the hours from 10 to six to 11 to five that would constitute a trespass. This restores the old hours, uh, which were 11 to six for regular parks and midnight to, I was just checking real fast. Um, midnight to six. Ten to six midnight to six, six for a riverfront. But I think that you made a mistake. So the, um, we're going back to the hours set by the parks that the park board stood up and said we go back to those hours and that's 10 10 to 6 10 for neighborhood six. parks yes midnight to 6 for riverfront and it's yeah. city parks and park land yes okay any other comments from council i, I hope okay. that answered your question okay so if an officer engages someone between the hours of 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock where does that stand it'll be a misdemeanor after 10. If you adopt this ordinance tonight. All right, any other? Uh, Councilmember Bingle, did that clear that up for you? Yeah, I, I, was, I was sure that it was a misdemeanor from 10 to 6 or midnight to 6. Okay. Just wanted to make sure, because like I said, okay. I, I thought that I heard somebody say that it was still only a misdemeanor from 11 to 5. I was just clarifying. 
Okay, good, thank you. Any other comments? All right, prepare to vote. Okay. Aye. All right, we just broke our beautiful 6-0. Darn. Darn, okay, so uh, we have four to two. Um, it still passes, thank you. And first reading ordinances. Ordinance C-36-424 relating to the rates of the water and hydroelectric department amending Spokane Municipal Code sections 13.04.2002.2004.2005.2008.2010.2012.2014.2015.2016 and point twenty one sixty one to chapter 13.04 of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date. Ordinance C-36-425 relating to the rates for water, wastewater, capital rates, and many spoken municipal code section 13.035.500 to chapter 13.035 of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date. Ordinance C-36-426 relating to the rates of the wastewater and sewer public utilities and services, amending Spokane Municipal Code sections 13.03.1004.1006.1008.1010. Point ten twelve point ten eighteen point ten twenty point ten twenty two and point ten eleven to chapter thirteen point zero three of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date. Ordinance C thirty six four twenty seven relating to the rates of solid waste disposal public utilities and services amending Spokane Municipal Code sections thirteen point zero two point zero five sixty point zero five sixty one point zero five sixty two point zero five sixty three and point zero five sixty eight to chapter thirteen point zero two of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date. Ordinance C-36-428 relating to the rates of solid waste collection, public utilities and services, amending Spokane Municipal Code sections 13.02.0336, to chapter 13.02 of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date. Ordinance C-36-429 relating to updates to the sewer use ordinances, adding new Spokane Municipal Code sections 13.03.0101.0216.0217.0218.0219.0220.0221.0222.0223 and .0503 and amending Spokane Municipal Code sections 13.03 0.0502.0508.0602.0622.0628 and 0.1216 to chapter 13.03 of the Spokane Municipal Code and setting an effective date. Further action is deferred on the first reading ordinances. Thank you. We have three people signed up Dennis, Megra, and Sherry. Head Council, Dennis Flynn, I live near St. Charles. While I appreciate the decision to maintain the current water rates instead of increasing them, the 10% increase in trash rates seems high, especially when one considers that our recycling collection was recently cut in half, which would lead one to consider or think that if my service is cut in half, the expenses must be cut in half, or at least on that part of it, and maybe my bill should be lowered. Um, affordable housing isn't just rent or a mortgage, it includes everything else to maintain a household, such as refuse collection. And I think we should revisit the fact that the recycling collection was cut in half, but our bills were not reduced, because when I contacted the city about this, I, I learned actually that there's very little that is actually recycled. Many of, much of what we put in that blue bin gets burned. Um, I propose it would be in our city's financial interest and in the interest of the taxpayers looking to minimize their costs, both to the city and to us, to eliminate curbside recycling and instead institute an educational program as to what is actually recyclable and include proposed options for self-collection and uh, disposal at recycling facilities. Thank you. Thank you. And Megra. Uh, this series of ordinances concerns pricing changes uh, for the year 2024 for water and hydroelectric, hydroelectric department rates. Uh, the first three ordinances, Ordinance C-36-424-5 and 6, these all have no change uh, from 2023 prices. They're the same, or they will be the same in 2024. Ordinance C-36-427 uh, lists an increase, like we just heard, of 10% 
for solid waste disposal for the year 2024. What I wanted to clarify in case other people did not have time to come through 512 pages, uh, the ordinance C36428 on page 483 of the August 21st City Council agenda lists in the summary um, an annual increase of 10% for solid waste collection. But what is not found in the summary, uh, but you can find on page 487, this ordinance also shrinks the size of garbage cans. The 32 gallon shrinks to 30, the 68 gallon down to 60, and the 95 gallon size shrinks down to 90 gallon. For a nice visual, in case you're a visual learner, page 489 has a graph that beautifully shows both how the prices will increase 10% and the can size will decrease to the aforementioned sizes. Thank you so much and good night. Thank you, and Sherry. Sherry Barnett, live in Spokane. And I do love the water and the trash service. I do though, I really hope that you can, since we're shrinking the size of the can, we're, we're, we're cutting the time that we use it and have as much as possible keep it down because there are a lot of people like me I don't make near as much money as I used to make when I worked, and it isn't easy. So there should be um, perhaps even some programs put in for people who have hardship from it. But um, that is one of the services I love. Thanks. Thank you. Right, we have no special considerations, no hearings. And before we adjourn, I'd just like to say uh, and express our sympathy for the folks who have lost homes, livestock, pets, and all their belongings in the fires recently. It's truly a sad, sad day for us. And I also want to express thank you for our first responders, our fire, our police, uh, who have kept people safe. and our gratitude goes out to them as well. So thank you. And um, anything else from council? Yes. I just want to acknowledge also the American Red Cross. Yes. Who stepped up and is filling a huge need in this community. Thank you. All right, we are adjourned until August 28th. Same place, same time. See you then, thank you. Maybe we should have people downstairs.